Yo, yo, live and direct, man. I keep telling y'all, this is the dopest channel on YouTube. Got the dope interview today, my man, Tony Womack, World Series champ. What year was that, Tony? Which one? Oh, yeah. oh, well, I was the champ only once. 2001, and then uh, 04, I lost when I was in St. Louis and Boston beat us. Check them out, y'all. All right, so Tony, man, listen, first of all, thank you for letting me get this interview. My pleasure, Sean. Shout out to my man, J.J. Davis, J.D., for hooking this up for me. Now, Tony, I want to start from the beginning. You from Virginia. I am. A little small town in Danville, outside Danville, Virginia, Chatham, Virginia. Okay. Uh, One-parent household or two-parent household? Two. Mom and dad. My mom's still here. My dad passed the year that we uh, won the World Series. My dad passed April of that year. April 2000, my, 2001, my dad passed. Okay. So it's been 20 years, brother, and it seems like yesterday. Okay, okay. Tony, growing up as a kid, you, you the only child? You got brothers? Uh, I got a younger brother. I am 52. I think my brother turns 50, or either 51 this year. So he's two years behind me. Okay, okay. Just, me, just my brother and I. Right. Where, where, where'd you go to elementary school? Uh, where'd I go? Gretna Elementary, yep. My, and then I went to Gretna High School in Gretna, Virginia. Then my brother ended up going to Chatham, Virginia for his high school. So we kind of went to different high schools. Okay. Um, Little League sports? Yeah. Um, baseball, basketball, football. Football I just did just because my dad helped coach. I really didn't care about it. I mean, I was good at it, but didn't really care. But What position you play in football? Uh, quarterback. Um, I could spin it. It just wasn't big enough, brother. You know, you take so many hits, you get a little guy 75 pounds wet. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how tall are you, Tony? Right now? 5'9". 5'9". 5'9". How much? 5'9", how much, uh, 185. Right now? Right now. Okay. That's my off-season weight. Okay. Now, I want to come back to that. So, you play Little League Baseball? Little League. Well, we, we call it Pony. Yeah, Little League. Little League Baseball. Starting what year? I really didn't start playing. I played... 10, 11. Competitively, though, 14 was when I really started to play competitively. I didn't, before that, it was just doing it. Just doing it. I mean, my dad played semi-pro, so that's kind of when I started really getting into it. He pushed you to play baseball, though? No, but he said if I was going to do it, I had to work at it. He just told me whatever I wanted to do, work at it. So he didn't really push me, just like I didn't really push my son. We just did it. We just did it. All right. So now, Tony, check it out. So you play in this little league. And then when you get to 14 years old, it changes. This is now 60, 90. They're throwing the ball harder. They hitting the ball harder. You still a little guy at this point. Right? I'm still a little guy. So that's when my dad made it. So hey, we got to get faster. We got to get a little stronger. We got to know the game. You know, my dad helped me become a student of the game more than the actual plan. Because I was fast, but you know, if you just speed and don't know how to watch pitches or watch catches and steal, it's not really helping. So we worked on being student of the game. Your dad was a big dude? No, my dad was a little guy. He was a little guy. My dad was a little guy. We were, my brother's actually the only biggest one in our family, which reminds me that's how my son is. My son is short and stocky, so is my brother. Okay. My brother was 5'10", about 2'10", 2'15". I mean, just short and stocky. They call it fat. I call it short and stocky. He's not fat. He just just well-rounded, just like my son. Well-rounded, but both my son and my brother could flat out hit. Now, Tony, at 14, you, you not 5'9 yet, are you? No, 5'6", five, 5'7", five, if that. A buck what? <laughs> A buck? Man, probably 95 pounds. I won't even, I don't think I hit 100 until I was about 15 or 16. I was thin, thin, could run. Could you could play? It. Oh, I could play, just had What no position weight. you was playing at 14, you? Uh, well, Sean, let's go back a little bit. I went to, I lived in the Chatham, Virginia district, but I went to Gretna because the Chatham people wanted me to play outfield because I could run and go get it. My dad thought I was a pretty good infielder. So we went to Gretna, that's why I ended up going to Gretna and playing there because I got a chance to play the infield. In Chatham, they just want to be a bit outfield because I can run so fast. Now, now, let's talk about geographically. Where is Gretna? All right, is, so, it, is it close to D.C.? Or close oh, no, to no. It's you close in the country? To, so, yeah, I'm in the country. And Gretna is close to Lynchburg, Virginia. Uh, Chatham is close to Danville, Virginia. It's just we kept they kept redistricting, redistricting our zone. So, well, you know, we could, we could actually go to both. I can go to Chatham. I can go to Gretna. But my dad said, Tony, you're a better infielder than the ones in Chatham, the ones in Gretna, but the coach in Gretna said he'd let me compete as an infielder. 
Chad, I just want you to put you in the center field and go, because you can run fast. So that's why I chose one way and my brother went the other way. All right. So now, where in the infield you playing? Short. You money? All day. You glove money? All day. Best what? feet and hands in the country. Where was you hitting in the lineup? First. You was on your own base percentage was money? My dad didn't believe in those stats. My dad believed in doing the small things, bunting, hitting the ball on the ground, and run fast, and developing me as a student of the game. Again, I'll repeat this until we're blue in the face. Learn the game. I'm not a power hitter, so why am I hitting the ball in the air? Why am I trying to lift the ball in the air? Get your hands and your eyes on top, hit ground balls, Check bunt the ball, and run. That's what you do. I mean, we became student of the game. But Tony, everybody want to hit frozen ropes in the gap, ground rule doubles, home runs? If they do it right, if they keep their hands and eyes on top of the ball, they can get those. But you can't get those consistently by keeping your hands underneath the ball. You can't do it consistently. I didn't say you can't do it, but consistently you won't be very good. Right, but you can have success also like what you mentioned, which is hitting singles, hitting ground balls, and using your speed. But also, my dad taught me who I am as a player. I wasn't a power guy, so why am I hitting the ball in the air? Check them out, y'all. You know, I can hit a ground ball to second base and beat it out. I can hit a ground ball third beat up. So my well, dad taught me, but my dad taught me who I am as a player, what's going to make me good, because baseball is all shapes and sizes. Okay. No, no, no in between. You don't got to be 6'3", 215 to be. You don't have to be 6'8", 6'9", 27 to LeBron, a muscle and just can fly out play. Nah, you don't have to be all that. You, you, know, you don't have to be Steph Curry who can shoot from half court, right? In baseball, we, we're all shapes and sizes, brother. And that's the beauty about the game. The only hard part about the game that these young kids don't understand, especially African-American kids, it's a process. You don't make no money in minor leagues. You don't make instant money right away. It's, you gotta go through the process, but it's well worth it. I understand living in the, in the projects, in poverty. I understand you go play basketball and football. You go right to the main show. I get all that. I get all that. But I'm telling you, man, baseball is legit. You get guaranteed money. You get to count your ABCs and one, two, threes without stuttering because all the hits you take. You know, you don't have so many torn ACLs and all that from bad ankles from basketball. I mean, I'm not knocking those sports. What I'm saying is we, as African-American kids, you know, your dad put whatever in your hand what he grew up with. If he didn't play baseball, he's not going to put a bat and glove in your hand. You can going to go to football or basketball. That's, Deion Sanders said it. Whatever that father or that person who's teaching you had in their hand, that's what they're teaching you. So if you didn't play baseball, it's not putting baseball bat in your hand. But baseball is an outstanding sport, brother. Ain't no question. So, so Tony, 14, you where you where you go to middle school at? Gretna Middle School. You was playing baseball in Gretna. Mm-hmm. Okay. You was playing for the middle school team. We, we didn't really have a middle school team. Basically, it was Pony League. We played one day on a week, one day on a weekend. So there was no the middle school team. There was no middle school team. You didn't really play organized ball until you got eighth and ninth grade, which is junior high and then high school. Where did you went to high school at? Gretna High School. You played freshman ball? Uh, eighth and ninth grade, I played junior varsity. And then... Uh, what position? Uh, short and second. Started? Yep. Where you hit the line? Number one. All right. And then high school, same thing. I played short, and I was number one. As a sophomore, you played varsity baseball? As a 10th grader, yep, I did. Started. So in, in Virginia, high school was 10, 11, and 12. Junior right. high, back 8, then. 9. Right, back same then. Thing, same thing back in Jersey, then, yes. back then, too. Back then, yes. So as a sophomore, you were start starting varsity baseball? Starting shortstop. Batting, batting first. Batting first. Batting first. You played junior, you played all three years? All three years. When, who... When did um did any when did the colleges start calling? <laughs> they didn't. This Guilford College found me. I was playing summer league ball in Greensboro, North Carolina. The coach at Guilford College saw me play in a summer league in Greensboro, North Carolina, and then two days later he wanted me to come to Guilford, even when registration has already been over. I was found. I uh, baseball wasn't it. I when I started late at fourteen, I wasn't polished. I wasn't. I wasn't, I wasn't that good. And 14 years old is late, man. There you go. So you go to, so you go to Guilford. I do. Scholarship? Uh, well, we it was financial aid. It was an NAIA, and then it, it been up being by the time I graduated, it was D three. How big were you then when you get to Guilford? Uh, started as a freshman, freshman shortstop, let off. How, how tall? 
Oh no, uh, probably where I am now, probably five nine, but still weight wise, uh, still about a one fifty. Start shortstop in college. Mm, batting first. Batting first. You played all four years. Uh, three. I got drafted my junior year. So, it's a funny story. My my junior year, I got tired of fall baseball. I played I played football. In college. <laughs> in college, in government college, wide receivers, kick return. Led the nation, led the NIA in kick returns and 32.3 yards a kick. And they only kicked me to me once. I had three returns, my longest was 97. So you, you're the speed. Yeah, but my college baseball coach didn't like it very much. You got your body. Did, no, no, I played, but he didn't like me playing. I fall baseball was bored. I, I got bored with it. I got bored with it. Like, majority of the people that played in the fall were incoming guys who were trying to make teams, see if they can make it. Most of our starting guys are playing either, uh, most of our guys that play on the baseball team are football players. So, so basically I'm out there with a bunch of kids trying to figure out how to play the game. And you know, you go and play these scrimmages and getting your butt beat, man, I ain't no good at all, dude. I just got bored. I got, I was bored of fall ball. Fall ball was no fun. I needed help. You know, I want to get better, but it was boring. All right. So, junior year of college, how did you, did you know you was gonna get drafted with the some teams were teams reaching out to your coach or how did that whole thing go? We went to Cocoa Beach spring training. I mean uh, spring break. In Florida. In Florida. We who? The whole team? The, the girl for college. We went to uh Cocoa Beach for a spring break tournament and uh I played well and next thing you know we come back from the tournament, I got scouts in the stands. So you think about it, Guilford we only had like a hundred we had a hundred fans. You know, 25 students, the rest parents, and then you look up and there are scouts. I'm like, oh crap. So I, I played well in Florida, and then next thing you know, the scouts are there. From what teams? So I can't remember who was there. You know, they all, all different teams, but that's when I knew that I had a chance because, you know, when you're at Guilford and that student, the people in the stands are not having a book open and looking at a book doing homework but you see a notebook and pads, you're like, okay, well, these are scouts. They had clocks, you know, there was no radar guns. That was just a stopwatch and a book. They just want to see me hit, they want to see me run. So that's pretty much for me. That's when I knew that I, they were there for me. That's when I started to think that I may have a chance to play at the next level. I didn't, there was no goal for me to play the next level. I so you want, wasn't growing up like, yo, I'm gonna play pro ball, nope. I'm gonna play pro ball. No, nope. I just told my mom when I leave Virginia, I ain't coming back. When I went to school, graduated with a degree in sports management, I'm not coming back. Um, there was nothing in Virginia left for me. Not, I'll come visit, but I ain't coming back. Who drafts you? Pittsburgh Pirates, seventh round. What year? 1991. How did that feel? <laughs> uh, <sighs> feelings are different because I didn't want to be a pro baller. But when I did, it came like, oh crap, I'm a professional. Like, I'm legitimately a professional. I got a real job playing baseball. So it was surreal, but at the same time, scared as poop. Because, you know, man, listen, you don't, you watch all the people on TV. You know, you got the, the Hank Aarons, you got the, at the time I was watching Cal Ripken and all those guys. You, you got all those guys playing. You just. Man, I'm one of them now. You watching them on ESPN and all that? I'm one of them now. Not there yet, but I'm one of them. And you're like, uh-oh. So from a boy, a small boy, grew up in Virginia country, and now my f first time flying ever, I had to fly to Buffalo. I had to go to Canada because that's where the, the uh, short season A was for Pittsburgh. It's like I got a lot of firsts. First flight, first away being from, away from home. Uh, first time making money playing baseball. Because, uh, you know, playing baseball, growing up, you had to pay to play. Whether it be, in, you know, whatever that little fee was, but you still have to put Now they're paying me to play. So a lot of reality set in. How much you sign for? 20000 But $20,000? But what people don't understand is I made Pittsburgh play, pay my last two semesters so I can graduate. So I took, I got 20 cash, and then they paid my next, because when you get drafted. Check them out, y'all. When you get drafted, I can only go to school in the fall, because, you know, during the spring, summer, I'm playing. So I made Pittsburgh pay guilt for my last two semesters of tuition so I can graduate. Check them and out, I, And I did graduate with a degree in sports management. Check them out, y'all.
Tony, you get drafted by Pittsburgh. You go to single A? I go to what we call short season A. It's like, I think it was only 72 games. And for the most part, there's a lot of the kids that got drafted the same year I did. And then there were some guys who were former number one picks or whatever, they got hurt or they just need to get a little playing time. So I was there with the 1990 number one overall pick and then the 1991 pick, which is the year I got drafted. I was with, and the 1990 overall number one pick for the Pirates was a shortstop. So I'm pretty much like, He's playing, if it's a seven games a week, he's playing five. I'm probably, if I can get two, it's great. At shortstop? At short. They drafted you as a shortstop? They drafted me as a shortstop. So, so you, 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 you sit at the bench a little bit? Uh, more than a little bit. Check him out, y'all. <laughs> more than a little bit. What did that do to Tony Womack psychologically uh, after being this big superstar, always starting shortstop since 14 You now you get drafted, you ride on the bench? Reality. Reality, it's uh, it's a money thing. That kid, 1990, number one pick, they pay him some money. So it's uh, it's reality. This guy on the death charge ahead of me, I gotta work my way up. You so got to show and prove. I gotta show and prove. I got to show and prove. Every chance I can, I don't care if it's two days a week, I gotta prove. What about the pressure Tony Womack put on Tony Womack? <sighs> No coach could ever put any pressure on, on, on me the way I put on myself. No, I don't feel pressure from coaches. I feel it from me. Check them out, y'all. I expect a lot out of my own self. I'm not worried about what they expect. I expect a lot out of me. So I'm a self-motivator. All right. How long you stay in single and short season in single A? Uh, I stayed in short season the whole year. Um, I left almost two weeks early so I can go enroll in the fall to go back to school to graduate. So I left probably 10 days early, 10 games early, and then uh, go to spring training in 92. How old are you? Uh, God, what am I, 21, 22, something like that. Um, I go to spring training in 92 and have a good spring. They sent me to low A. Low, low A, which is was in Augusta, Georgia. Check them out, y'all. So I stayed in Richmond County. Yeah, I stayed. Martin Evans. <laughs> I stayed. Bobby there. Jones Expressway. You know it all, big dope. Um, I, I I stayed there the whole year. Hot down there. I in, what? Man, I thought it was hot in Virginia until I went to, to Augusta. That's a different kind of hot. That's that heat. Man. That's a different kind of hot, brother. That's that different kind of hot. That's when I learned how to take care of your body in the heat. Because, dude, I was like, I, I, the heat don't bother me, man. That heat gets you. So I stay there the whole year. I leave about, same thing, 10, 10 12 to 8 games early so I can finish up. And then in 92, I finished my degree. I, well, I got my degree in 1993, uh, spring of 93. Check them out, Joe. I got my degree. So I was good. 92, 93. 93 is a special year. Talk to him. 93, I started in uh, high A, Salem, Virginia. Got promoted to double A, which is in uh, Raleigh, at Zebulon, North Carolina, outside of Raleigh. Check him out, y'all. Same year. You playing, Tony? Sa what? You getting Damn, busy. Same year, that same year, I get called up to the big leagues in 93. So I'm playing big league baseball. I went to low, I went to high A, double A, big leagues, all in one year. I was balling. Now, what helps is, I was putting up numbers, doing it right, but the guys in front of me either was getting hurt or they traded or whatever. So once they put you on their 40-man roster, dude, they expect to see you in the big league at some point. So I took advantage of it. You was putting up numbers, Tony? Put up numbers, big dog. 70, 70 bases, 60 bases. Stealing, you mean? What? I mean, I was very good at that. So you get called up to Pittsburgh? Mm-hmm, 1993. My Talk first, about that day you get there. September call up. Shh, bro, you walk in that clubhouse, you low. Who'd you see in the clubhouse? Let's see. Lloyd McClendon, Dave Clark, Jay Bell, Andy Van Slay, Carlos Garcia. All the people that you see in spring training, because you know, you go to spring training, you're on a 40 man roster, you go to big league camp, you see all these guys that are in front of you. You know, then they send you down, you gotta go to my league, got all that. Man, 93, I go, I'm like, crap, I'm here. In the locker room. In the locker room. In the locker room. And that same year, I was co-MVP for the organization as far as the mile is concerned. So I, I handled my business in 93. So you get there, you go in the locker room, you suit up. Where they put you at? 
Uh, you know, you, you really like him play a lot. I mean, Jay Bell was trying for 200 hits. Guys were heads incentives in their contracts about, you know, if I get so many plate appearances, this is this, they get money. So, mm. you know, they, they, those guys still played a lot. Cause politics. Had, no, no, it's no. I'm going to call it politics. It's called smartness. You put it in your contract, how much you want to get, how much you got to play to get what you want. Check them out, y'all. So it's all good. You understood that. You're, you're a rookie. You're a rookie. You, even if you're in the big leagues, you're a rookie. You got no say-so. You got zero say-so. You play when you're told. You flying on the plane? What? See, you know, you've been busting for so long. After a game, say you play, today is Monday, you play tonight, and you got to go to Cali, and you're on a flight after the game. Or you got to go to Philly, you're on a flight after the game. I've been so used to being in AAA. Well, I never went to AAA, but in AA, we busted everywhere. You know, from Carolina to Florida, like 16 hours on a bus, dude. And when you're a little guy and you got 6'6 six, six sitting behind you, you can't let your seat back. You might be sleeping, standing straight up. <laughs> but it's all good. And they, after the game, they feeding y'all those full what? spread and all that. What? Man, totally different. No PB and J. No, uh, no, no little what do you call? We, uh, what is that place? Uh, White Castles. Ah, uh, man, you got steak and lobster, man. The big in, in the, the big, locker room. In the big leagues? Oh God, yeah, dude. Oh yeah, that's big time, bro. Who's the head coach? For me, when I first got there, it was Jim Leland. And then by the time then G Lamar took call. What? No joke, don't play. Ain't scared of nobody. Nope. And he gets respect, but at the same time the man was good at what he's he was a very good manager. That man knew the game. He knew baseball? He knew the game. Um, all right, so you on the roster. When do you get in your first Major League Baseball game with your Pittsburgh Pirates. You know uh, I, I probably pinch ran a lot. I didn't, but St. Louis was my first official bat against Donovan Osborne, lefty. That I think we were in St. Louis when I first got my first beal. And then I faced Dave Tailgater, which f he was pitching for your Mets at the time. That's who I got my first hit off of. September 21 is my first hit. September 21st, 21st what year? 93. Well, what kind of ball he threw you? Didn't matter. Got my first hit. He threw me a fastball. You started that. You started that game. No, 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 no. Pinch no. hit. I pinch hit. What was the count when he when you when, when twenty twenty one? Two balls, one strike. Got it. Single where? The right center. How you felt when you when you got the first base, Tony? Relieved. I finally got my first hit out of the way. Once you see them take that ball out, I was like, all right, cool. Now I'm ready to go. It's always gonna get that first out of the way. The first is it. The first or everything. You get that first hit, you get that first air, you get that first ground ball. Whatever the first is, you get out of the way, you can relax. Until then, it's just you playing big league ball. You're like, man, you sure I, I do? I really I deserve to be here. Am I really here? But right. I changed I changed my whole motto about that though. To what? Like, not sure I deserve to be here. It went to I deserve to be here. I belong here. Changed in a heartbeat. I belong here. I read that they you were they had you second base, shortstop, right field. Mm -hmm. You were kind of moving around. Yeah, I got traded from Pittsburgh to Arizona. They needed a leadoff guy, and the only spot they had was right field. Arizona did. They did. And you got traded over there. I got traded there. No say so by me. So they traded me and met with Jerry Colangelo, and he told me, "Hey man, you play right field and do this for me. I will take care of you." I was skeptical because you know I've been in the middle infield all my my whole career. So you go out there and you learn, you get better. Then two years later, he took care of me, gave me a four-year deal. You started right field when you got down there? Started right field. Where did you bat? First. I think that year, if I'm not mistaken, I think I had 72 bags that year. Stole the bases. Mm -hmm. That was your thing. I think that was my third in a row. 96, 97, 97, 98, 99. 70 bags? No, 60, 58, 72. 97, 98, and I, was, I had stolen make champs. I was stolen make champ three years in a row. Of the whole league? Um, I want to say in the National League in 98. 99 was the whole league, both divisions, um, both sides. I think 97 and 98, I think I was just on the National League side. I can't remember who was on, a, on who what they had on the American League side. I don't remember. So you so you had a good season with the first one in Arizona, right field, mm -hmm. batting first. Mm -hmm. 
And you, then I think they moved you to Infinite, brought yeah. you in, right? So then I started going, then, you know, 99, I was going back and forth, back and forth, right field, infield. If we made a double switch, made a move, but then, you know, 2000, I went right back to short, dude, and I stayed there my whole career with Arizona. Starting shortstop for the Arizona mm -hmm. Diamondbacks. Mm -hmm. To a dude that got bored with baseball and played football got in bo junior. Got bored with fall baseball. Got bo bored with fall baseball right. and tried football junior year in college. <laughs> Weird, isn't it? Now you just start a shortstop for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Mm -hmm. you, have a good, you have a good career with Arizona. I had a great career with Arizona. Great career with Arizona. Great career. Right now they got me listed as... Uh, what is it? The 20, you know, out of the 20 years or whatever they've been in, I was voted a top shortstop. You know, they, they gave the... Because that was an expansion team, right? Right, of course. And so they gave a, for a position, they said vote for who was the best in that position. So I was voted the best shortstop thus far, thus far. And it's been a while, so thus far. All right, all right. So now... I was reading in the New York Times that your double in Game 7 of the World Series against the New York Yankees, Mariana Rivera, first World Series title for Arizona, you hit a double to right with a man on first and second in Game 7. They said, I didn't say this, this is the greatest clutch hit in the history of baseball. Correct. Man on first and second. Mm -hmm. You hit a double to right. Correct. But check this out. What I want to know is game seven, Tony Womack walks up to the plate. He's looking at Mariana Rivera. I mean, pressure Tony like a motherfucker, man. Mm -hmm. No pressure. Nah, Tony, don't say nah, that, man. There's no pressure. It's game seven. There's no pressure. See, the point, the moment that you put pressure on it and you realize it's Mo and Mo don't blow saves, and when Mo comes in the game, it's usually his walk up son, Mr. Sandman. If you have all that in your brain, you're beat. You finish. You're beat. If you think about that, you're beat. You're beat. You knew you was going to get up. You knew you was going to get up that inning. No, we had a, a whole lot of stuff happen that inning. Check them out, y'all. Gracie, Mark Grace gets a base hit. Um, Jay Bell bunts it. He bunts it hard back to Mo. He throws it away to center. At the meantime, Mark Grace got pinch ran for by David DeLucci, who slid in the second. That's where, you know, Jeter, they missed the ball. So now it's nobody out, first and second. And then I think Damian Miller, I think Damian Miller bunts the ball, yeah. And he bunts it, Mo throws it to third. So now it's one out, man, on first and second. Now here I am. So for me to get there, a lot of things had to work. So it was one out when you came up? It was one out. Man on first and second. Mm -hmm. Game seven? Game seven. What in it? Bottom of the ninth, my friend. Check them out, y'all. Tony, when we be in the backyard in the fifth and sixth grade, this is what we, these are the scenarios we say. Two seconds on the clock, I'm at the no free doubt. throw. No doubt. Bases loaded, no bottom doubt. of the ninth. No doubt. So Tony, when you get your back, Talk to me about when you go get the bat, the batting glove, the helmet, and, and walk into the batter's box. What's on your dome, man? Zero. Basically, I said I need this. That cutter needs to start in the middle of the plate. If that cutter starts middle in, it's on my thumbs. If that cutter starts middle away, it's right down the middle. So I had, to, I wanted Mo to start that ball on the outside half of the plate so I can get a good swing at it. I said I had to see the ball up, and I got to beat the ball to the spot, meaning... We know it's Mo throws two pitches, 94, 96. It's the same same pitch, but two different speeds. One cutter is 94, the other one cuts late at 96. So you can't tell as a hitter which one you're getting. All you gotta do is tell yourself, you gotta beat that cutter to the spot with your hands. You gotta get your hands in front. The hands gotta be in front of the plate or you beat. You're not thinking about the stands, the fans, oh, God, no. the game, mm -mm. Mo, mm -mm. the Yankees, the Diamondbacks, Colangelo. You walk into the plate saying, I got to see the ball. What did you just say? You got to hit. I got to see the ball out front of the plate. I got to hit that cutter out front of the plate. If he gets on the plate, he's got me beat. Yo, that's crazy that you was able to 
to, to. Yeah, but you gotta understand this. This guy was so good with just with one pitch. That's how good he was. Right, like one but, pitch. But Tony, you you not thinking about the moment. You you thinking like, I know what he gonna throw. I got to have my hands out front. Correct. What pitch did he throw? He's only throw one pitch. Through that cut. That's it. You saw it. The problem is, I think it was the two one pitch that he threw a cutter and it went right down the middle and it didn't cut and I fouled it straight back. Oh, what was the count? Uh, when I got the hit, it was 2-2. Two, two. So you had two strikes on you? Mm -hmm. And you ain't thinking like, yo, I'm, I got two You still focused on what you got to focus on? Still stay in the moment. And what happened on the next pitch? Oh, well, well. He accidentally hit my bat and it went the right field for a double. <laughs> <laughs> and you tied the game. That was that was tied the game. That's the tie the game. Y'all was losing. Yeah, we were down. Uh, what were we down? Two to one. And you hit the double. So now we drop one run in. Who was on first and second when you uh, came up? Let's see. Uh, Midre Cummins pinch ran, so he was at second base. He scored when I hit, and then. Jay Bell was uh, it was second and third, so he was at third when uh, when we came up. So Jay Bell was at first, and Midre comes on second. And then Luis Gonzalez comes up and hits. So no, before that, Craig Council, who's bad behind me, gets hit. Mo hits him with a pitch to load the bases. So now it's the bases <clears> loaded <throat> with two outs. Game time. Game time. And y'all win. Thank you. Gonzo, you know, Joe Torrey brings the infield in, and I'm like, man, this is, we got a chance if Gonzo gets jammed, he hits a blooper, we can do it. Because the thing about with Mo, he jammed so many people that I was surprised that Joe Torrey brought the infield in. He could have played him three quarters of the way. If it's hit hard enough, Gonzo's not very fast. They could turn two, we go to the extra innings. If it's hit soft enough, you know, Jeter, the guy, they can throw it home and get the force. But he brought him all the way in. I was like, man. Just a little jam shot will do it. Just a little jam shot. Now, I, I still watch the replay every now and then, and I'm thinking if he's playing double play depth or three quarters, I don't know if Jeter still get that ball. I don't know if he gets that ball. but And the reason why I know he don't get that ball is because that's the same year my father passed. And so April 2001, my dad passed. So it was 2001 was a long year for me. But when I saw that ball floating, I said, yeah, I know, I know who took care of that ball. I know who took care of that ball. I... It's only one person who made that ball go right there. Did you get MVP? For no, I think Randy and uh, Randy Johnson and Kurt Schilling split the MVP. I mean, there was my there was the this big horses. This is the year with the dirty with the bloody sock. No, that's old four. That's when he was at, he was at, uh, he was with the Red Sox. That's right. That's he right. He was with the Red Sox. That's right. Randy so, Johnson and so, Kurt Schilling. So was on. the the two headed monster, they both deserved it, man. They 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 did that thing. Man, shout out to Randy Johnson and, and, oh, and Kurt Schilling. Oh, did Gonzo get it? I don't know. I don't know. All I know is. Whoever got the MVP doesn't really matter because we all got the same ring and the same bonus. Check them out, y'all. So it doesn't really matter. They, Tony, they call that hit the, probably the greatest clutch hit in the history of this Well, no, you think about it, Sean. If I don't get that hit, we lose. So now it's two outs and a man on first and second versus I get the hit as one out, a man on second and third. Whole different scenario. It, it, it's a different scenario. I mean, a lot of things can go right or wrong, but it's a different scenario. But that's the first time, you know, I've ever seen Mo blink on the mound. Mo blinked a lot on the mound. After he threw that ball, that first bunt away, and then after I got the hit, he really was blinking. Mo, that's the first time I've ever seen Mo blink. Is this toward the end? You got to understand. Check him out, Chuck. He was 8-0 and o with 16, 17 saves in the postseason. I gave him his first loss. Well, I might hit this, but we as a team, we gave him his first loss. In game seven. In game seven. Of the World Series. That was his first loss. Well, they were winning. That's his first loss. They went into the bottom of the ninth he winning. He blew a save and loss. Yes. Yes. That's, he was 8-0 in the postseason. With seven, I don't know how many saves, but that's his first blown save and loss in postseason. Think about that. How many postseasons this dude's been in? Yeah, Mr. Sandman. It's over when he come in. Yeah, somehow or another the sand didn't get in my eyes. Check him out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 Tony, was was it was it was it any 
greatest satisfaction because it was the Yankees? Oh, God, yeah. What you because, mean, man? Because the Yankees have been winning everything. You, you know, the heroics that Derek Jeter did against Oakland for them to go to the World Series. I mean, you want to win the World Series no matter what, but... That was when he went in and... Yeah, he flipped, oh, flipped, flipped the ball, right. You want to win the World Series regardless of who you're playing, but to beat the Yankees is special because they had been winning all the World Series. And they were on top of the world. So what's the... It was David versus Goliath. That's basically what it was. <coughs> they, listen, they, Harold Reynolds, I think, said, if, if it wasn't Harold Reynolds, I'm not going to say, but somebody said that there's no way Arizona could win with... Tony will make it Craig Council playing up the middle of shorts. They're not going to beat the Yankees with those two guys. They said that? I, I want to say it's Harold Reynolds. If not, I apologize, Harold. But somebody said we couldn't win the World Series with me playing short and Craig Council playing second. Because they had Jeter and Soriano. I'm like, okay, and what's, what's the point? What's the point? So, Tony, what does this do for your career after this World Series? Uh, nothing. Other than being a World Series champion, of course. Nothing. I was still on the contract with Arizona. Um, it, it didn't. It didn't change my career. It just. It solidified me as a a champion. I am a champion. It didn't. It didn't do, in my opinion, it didn't do anything for my career. My career was. I was going well. I got a four year deal with Arizona. I was playing well. I mean, I'm set. You know, when you're a player and you got a multi year deal. How much was your four year deal for? Uh, I think seventeen and a half. But when you're first, you know, you get your first multi-year deal, you're set for four years in that place. You can relax, right? It, for the first seven or eight years, I was on the one-year contracts. Every year? Every year I had a one-year contract. So you got to show and prove every year. Well, but I also had the same mentality when Arizona gave me my four-year deal. You got the four-year deal. Yeah, because that four-year year is guaranteed. Now I'm trying to play for another contract. So it didn't really do anything for my career except for I'm a champion. That's what it, I am a champion. There's people who want to be Hall of Famers. There's people who has all these accolades, right? But at the end of the day, there's 30 teams and you're the last one standing. There's people in the Hall of Fame who's never played in the World Series. There's people, I played in two, one, one, lost one. There's people in the Hall of Fame who've never been to a World Series. And you did your thing in the bottom of the ninth inning of Game Seven against the Yankees. Against the greatest dynasty at, the, at that point in the nineties, that was like the greatest. That dynasty was awesome. That that dynasty was awesome. Got to take your hat off to him for that. I mean, you can't you can't be mad at that. I mean, that's all they paid for. They bought that team, man. You still got to play. You can buy anything you want. You still got to play. 162 games. You still got to play. That only that doesn't include spring training or the playoffs. You still got to play. I don't be, be, believe in buying. You can buy what you want. Sometimes you buy. Sometimes you buy it don't work. Right. No, but it worked. You can't blame them. You know, if they came and threw money at me, I did go. I did go. Now, don't. I did go where? I played for the Yankees in 05. One year? I had a two-year deal, then they traded me. It, it was, at the time, listen, the players were great. It's just the front office, I'm just not a fan. I'm going to leave it at that. No, I'm not a fan with the front office. So you did play with the Yankees? Well, five. Pittsburgh, Arizona, and the so Yankees? I went, so I went Pittsburgh to Arizona. Um, somehow or another, <laughs> they got rid of Jerry Colangelo, and then some other people wanted to take over front office people, and they just messed up the whole thing. So they got rid of me, they got rid of Randy, Reggie Sanders went somewhere else. I mean, they broke up that team. They shouldn't have broke up that team. They shouldn't have broke up that team. They shouldn't have broke up that team. They shouldn't have. Y'all could have maybe ran it back. We, well, yes and no. Oh, God, next, close. next year we had, you know, we got, but they kept, each year they kept taking pieces away. They kept taking pieces away, which I'm like, man, we could, could have had a small, because, you know, we as Arizona were the, Fast as ever as a franchise team to win a World Series. It only took we won a World Series in four years as a franchise team, as a as a expansion team. In the first within five years, y'all won a World we Series. We did it in four, fast as ever. We did it in four. <clears throat> we did it in four. So the whole thing, you know. So I left. So Arizona traded me to Colorado for a month, and then I went to the Cubs in '03. So '03 I got traded to Colorado, and then 
same year I got traded to the Cubs, and we were five, seven outs of going away from going to the World Series. You know, so then 04, I'm in St. Louis. 05, I'm with the Yankees. They traded me to Cincinnati. In 06, I'm in Cincinnati. Then I got traded back to um, the Cubs in 06. And then 07, I finished with the Nationals. And that was it. Time to go home. Time to go home and be a father and a husband. Tony, when you hit that double in the bottom of the ninth with one out to tie the game, how tall were you? How much did you weigh? Uh, five nine. Probably my playing weight, probably 165, 170. My offseason weight is like 185. You was 5'9", 170 starting in the big leagues. Why does everybody think, man, you got to be 6'3", 225, that, that, that's all the scouts are looking for? You? <clears throat> they, I don't know. I, I, can't, I can't speak for them. I'm seeing, I'm seeing a trend. The trend is if you don't go to a power of... Baseball's changed. They used to have more scouts, old school scouts. Now it's analytical. Now we're just doing numbers. Um, if your name is not a household name, you don't go. They're getting all these kids out of high school, not ready. I don't care how much you are, you're really not ready. You haven't seen this type of pro ball is different. You haven't seen it. You're not ready. Pitchers, I think, should go out of high school. You go and let professionals. Why? Because if you go and let professionals start to train your arm and your – They'll save mileage on your arm. You go to college, these college coaches got to win, so they don't care about the mileage on your arm. Check them out, y'all. It's about winning. Check them out. It's about winning. Pitchers, I think they should go if they get drafted. Position players, if you're not one of the top 50, man, go to school. Learn the game. The speed of the game changes. It gets faster. It gets quicker. You become better as a person, my opinion. Don't have no jealousy whatsoever. My opinion. My opinion. So... This, the prototypical model, baseball, there is no model. There is no model. They try to make it a model, but, but they're starting to realize that they can't win with that model. There is no model. Baseball is processed. There is no, all shapes and sizes, different creed. Baseball is not a model. It's not a model. Yo, Tony. When I'm growing up, me and you the same age. I'm born in 69. I'm 53. You 50. You old. I ain't old. You older. You old. You older. You older. You older. You older. What happened to the foundational black American within baseball? When I was growing up in the 70s, the Yankees would have four or five starting black players, mm -hmm. the Kansas City Royals, mm -hmm. the St. Louis Cardinals, five, six players. What's up with that? What happened? Um, or your opinion, rather? In my opinion, it starts at home. Again, we spoke of this earlier. If you are the father or the caregiver or the grandparent, whatever you are to that kid, and you didn't grow up at home with a baseball in your hand, a baseball bat, you grew up with football and basketball, that father figure is pushing you to that. This is what Dion said, and when he said it, I, I believe it. If you're, if you're not going to teach your son if you didn't have it in your hand. You're not going to push him that way. You're going to push him to what you did, especially if you did well in high school or in college. You're going to push him to that sport. That's one. Two, baseball, it's a process. You get drafted, you go to school, you get drafted. It's a process. You, gotta be, you can be in the minor leagues for five or six years. Basketball and football, you go right to the show. These guys are going to college and playing one year and getting drafted. So it, it's, it's the instant success, instant pay pay uh payroll the payout i get it not my, not knocking it i get it uh third travel baseball is outpricing us we can't afford it we can't afford it we can't afford it we can't afford it it's our pricing. Not only just African American, but the brown kids and some white kids. We can't afford yeah, it. Yeah, it ain't just black people. It's a lot of white yes, people. We can't. We can't, can't afford it's it. It's a lot of money with this we, travel thing. We can't afford it. So, and then the last part is, if you're not going to these big power five schools, they're not looking for us. My son went to Norfolk State University, Norfolk, Virginia. Historically black college. Freshman All-American. Morris Brown. I went to Morris Brown. We used to take Norfolk State up in football. Yeah, well, you said football. You know, we we talking we baseball. baseball that's, well, that's why, that's why you couldn't tear us up. But nonetheless, he goes there and Coach Claudio Clark. Every year he was there, he got people drafted. Da 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 da. My son goes to Norfolk State. He's a freshman All-American. Freshman All-American. 
Now, what position? Uh, second base. But he's a fresh, fresh all American. My, my whole point is that being a fresh all American, right? You would think people will understand. Not to mention, they knew who I was. Hey, Tony Womack's kid, right? Fresh all American. The MIAC, the conference. My son got. He wasn't first team. He wasn't second team. He wasn't third team. He wasn't on the He wasn't even freshman of the year. He was absolutely nothing. His freshman year, but baseball people say you're a freshman All American. So the email went out to the MEAC and said, "So this Womack kid is a freshman All American from D1, D2, D3, JUCOs, everything, but you as a conference don't give him nothing." So nonetheless, I keep telling my son, "We don't play for accolades. We play because we're very good at what we do." Check him out, Joe. Right. So he's a freshman All American. He was at Norfolk State four years. Didn't even get drafted. We signed as a free agent with the White Chicago White Sox this past year. In uh, what we had, 22 and 21. It's funny, right? Scouts are there to watch him. They said they, they put him on a, on a draft. You you have to submit a name to the draft board for your kid to get drafted. Those people that said they was going to do it, they didn't do it. Check them out, they didn't do it. So it was a, again, once again, it's adversity for my son and for my family. It's a kiddo. Don't worry. So I personally called Ken Williams Sr., the GM for the White Sox, said, hey, just give my kid a, just give him a workout. Just give him a workout. Kenny Williams still there? He's still there. I said, give him a workout. I said, he said, Tony, that's up to the scouting department. So the guy calls me on a Friday, on a Monday. They worked out on my, they worked my kid out. On a Thursday, they called, hey, man, we want to sign your kid. We want to invite him to spring training. And now my son, so there's six levels. Rookie ball, low A, high A, double A, triple A, big leagues. In year one of pro ball, my son is at the third level. He's at high A and doing well. I, again, they don't look for us. If my son was a, in my opinion, if my son was a freshman All American, playing at a Power Five school, no doubt they got drafted. But I understand with COVID, short COVID, short things, people don't can't scout later. I get all that, no problem. I get all that. But then my point was, I did really, really well in the game. I respect the game. You're not gonna look at my son for this. I get it. So they can say what they want. My opinion is they go and choose what they want to choose. They, old school scouting, when I scouted me, oh, they'd, have been, they'd have been all over my son. But they, it's not that way. The game has changed. There are people who are running it are from Harvard and Yale and analytics. These guys, they never hit a ball. They plug the numbers into a model, computer but model. But that model doesn't work in the playoffs. It may work in regular season because you got another game tomorrow. Right. In the playoffs, it don't work that way. It's either win or go home. That's why you see the Braves, Snicker, he, he's old school manager. Dusty's an old school manager. Tony Russo, old school manager. That's why those guys win and, you know, do their thing because. Buck Walter. Buck Walter. That's how you win. You win by playing the game. You don't play the game with a computer. Some of the analytics, for, as far as health and maintenance and, you know, keeping you healthy, get it. When it's between the white line, man, it's hard and effort. It's real simple. Hard and effort. And when they go back from changing the shift, we're going to see how these. You know, I don't blame the shift. I blame it's bad hitting. If I'm a right-handed hitter and they throw a fastball away and I'm pulling it, that's just bad that's hitting. That's my fault. That's bad hitting. Punch it to right. That's bad hitting. Punch it so to right. So they can talk about the shift all they want. It's bad hitting. It's bad hitting. It's bad hitting. It is bad hitting. But if they shifted against thing. you, Tony, as a, as a lefty, if they shifted everybody I'd to bunt the every, I'd bunt to third base every time. I, I hit a weak ground ball to third base. I, I, I'm going to be full Deliberately. Oh, God, yeah. But they wouldn't do that when I was playing because they played the game the right way. We're not playing. We playing with. We playing the game through a computer. Like starters are going five innings. If that's the case, Randy Johnson, Kurt Schilling, all those guys would still be pitching right now. If they only had to pitch five innings. John Smoltz would be still be there. Craig Maggs would be pitching five innings. What them dudes was going? Dude, they when they took the ball, their goal was going nine. And even every they, five days. Every fifth day, they going nine. That's the goal. Nine. It ain't five. Nine. But that's that's where that's where the game has shifted. That's where the game has shifted. I can't fault the way it's shifted, cause I gotta understand how it works. Because I gotta be be mentally prepared to help my son be prepared for how this game is being shifted. What is Tony Womack doing today, September twenty twenty three? We're here at Showcase Baseball Academy. What are you doing today? You still involved in baseball? Oh, yeah. What's going on? I train kids. I train my own son. I train kids. I'm going to help coach a 12U team, I think. I just, 
I'm giving back to the game. I'm giving back. I, I train, you know, Will Myers is a big leaguer. I train him when he's here in the off season. Brian Goodwin was a big leaguer. I trained him. I, I trained some kids. I'm still training. I still train. I'm giving back. I'm, I'm trying to help these young guys, but you know, when you get caught up in, you got this game figured out. There's nothing I can. There's nothing I can tell you that'll make you better. You already got to figure. I just tell them, don't come to me when you struggle. Don't come to me when it ain't working, because what you're doing, it ain't gonna work the whole. Consistency is the reason why you stay in the big leagues. Some of the stuff you do is not gonna last, but if you do it this way all the time, you'll last. You got to do stuff that's consistent. These kids don't want to hear that. They, they want instant. They want instant feedback and proof right now. Man, if I keep working at it over time, it works. But they want instant right now, which is hard to sustain because your uppercut swing can only go so far. But if I learn how to I learn the bat path, control my bat barrel, control me being as a player, where my eyes, how I get to, man, I'm good. You have to put in what you want to get out of. If you want quick stuff, you, you got to quit. You got a Band-Aid fix and that's it. Tony, how important is the dome in baseball, the mental game, the, the, the confidence, all oh, it's of that? All, it's all. It's all. They used to dislike the way my son walks to the plate. They call it cocky. My, walk, my kid walks to the plate saying, I'm better than you. Check him out. I'm better than you. And I'm finna show you. Without saying a word. But they think that's cockiness. I'm like, dude, if you walk with confidence, it ain't cockiness. No. And that's a mental edge because you're intimidating the pitcher but, from but, the door. Well, it's more like, no, okay, I'm gonna show you. Okay, go ahead and make my mistake. Pow! Made that mistake. I made you. So, you got to walk and act and play as if you're better than anybody without saying a word. Check them out, Joe. Right? Wear your uniform white, you know, the flat bill and all that. It's, that's, that's, that that's that 21st century stuff. I, I mean, play the game the right way. Play it with confidence. Play that you belong there and believe that you belong there. My man, my man. Hey, Tony, <coughs> man, listen, thank you for letting me get this interview, man. Um, I appreciate you. Can, are you, you on Instagram? you have any social media you can give to people if they want to reach out to you to train them? I got zero. You want to be trained by Tony Womack? Go to Showcase Baseball Academy in Charlotte, North Carolina. That's where I am. I got zero social media because, one, you know, I was in the limelight. I don't need to be in the limelight. It's not about me anymore. It's about me helping others to get to where they want to get to. So, Showcase Baseball Academy, Charlotte, North Carolina. That's where I am. You know, it ain't that hard to find me. Tony Womack, appreciate you, kid. Showing anytime, brother. Thank you, man.